Well, I'm going to do another talk here about what I'm working on with the Open Incubator Framework and to try to explain it because if anyone reads my writing, you know my writing makes your eyes bleed. I'm dyslexic and I hate writing. I'd much rather make a video even though I tend to be a little verbose. Um, so I want you to think of the Open Incubator Framework like Wikipedia. And the Open Incubator Framework would be the Wikipedia Framework, okay, where the the person who is the page founder, the article founder, um, would be not the founder, right? The page itself would be the found up, right? So when you first start that page, that page isn't, you know, it's just an idea. You, you still, you're just, you're just kind of uh, big strokes. So that's where your idea starts. But ultimately, what you're trying to do is get your page featured. Think that when it when you feature a page, think of that as launching into a startup. Because once it's once someone says it's featured, then it's probably capable of securing funding. One way to think of a found up is to think of it as a strategic initiative, and that seeks to become, you know, a successful startup, a strategic initiative. And I even like the term blue ocean because blue ocean represents a kind of strategy. So if you are a blue ocean strategy, strategic initiative, seeking to validate itself and to build the team, the prototype, and secure the customer to launch you as, you know, as a startup, that's what a found up is all about. So where startups are all about teams, what we are trying to do is to develop basically a global team of folks who you know, ultimately can help crowdsource by becoming an advisor. And an advisor to a found-up is different than an advisor to a startup. An advisor to a, a found-up basically is very similar to the, to the casual or the passive Wikipedia user, right? He um, or she may come in and say, oh, there's a grammar problem here or there's an idea here or whatever, and provide some input. Now, it's passive. There's no requirement. You can do it when you want. I'm not going to tell you to do anything. It's ultimately up to you. Now, ultimately, if you want to become an admin of Wikipedia, or if you want to become a team member, then you have to show your value, right? So advisors who actually, you know, say, you know what, I really like this project. I'm going to help crowdsource it. I'm going to get behind it. I'm going to help build it. What's going to happen is the founder or other team members can basically nominate and say, listen, we want this person to be a team member and invite that person. Why don't you be a team member? Okay. And finally, um, we have, um, you know, we have partners uh, that get behind the project. Now, this part of the found up actually brings um, something called the strategic capital campaign or the strategic initiative in, in play. You know, I used to work for a company that's raised over a billion dollars using strategic initiative for raising capital for very large nonprofits. Their system is actually very simple. It's awesome system and it's built on 30 years worth of trial. It's, you know, it's basically um, it's a secret sauce system, right? It's not patented because the moment you patent it, everyone else would do it. So ultimately what I'm, what I've done is taken their system now, their system is for raising, you know, 5 million, 10 million, 50 million. We once did an armory campaign in Pennsylvania for 50 million. We raised the money in nine months. Imagine that, 50 million. We didn't give it anyway shares, we didn't give it equity, you know. Um, so ultimately, using the strategic capital campaign methodology for found ups, I have, you know, basically proven to myself do in um, Help Panco that it works. See, when I did Help Japan Co, because it's kind of a quasi nonprofit, I intuitively went to that framework to raise money for it. And in doing so, the lesson learned was, wow, I could do this for any found up. And it really wasn't that hard. I mean, in one month, raising over 50,000 in pledges is pretty damn good, right? So what what, what I'm looking to do is I believe that teams aren't that important. Well, they are important, but they're not that important to the idea, right? They're important to the startup. But, you know, a found up is not a startup. 
So what I want to do is to basically run 100 found ups and see what happens. So if you're a guy with an idea, any idea, right, that you think is a blue ocean, go to Wikipedia and look in blue ocean strategy. If you think you have a blue ocean strategy idea for a business or opportunity, don't come with me any of this ML crap, okay? It's gotta be your idea, not someone else's. And you want me to help you launch it, I'm willing to give it a try, right, with my team that I have and, and the network that I'm setting up. Um, and ultimately, we will validate your idea through our network. Um, advisors are either gonna sign up or they're not. Team members are gonna come on. And um, as a group, we'll work on your idea and launch it. If it's any good, I can raise the money for it. And ultimately, within a year, it's going to be, you know, hopefully within, you know, three to six months, it will be its own startup. Using the framework that I've created. So the, my framework is really not rocket science. It's built on different industries and different things, pulling them together. And also in looking at Wikipedia and wondering, well, if Wikipedia was startups and each of those pages represented a startup, right? And, and the person starting the page represented the idea. And these different players are on that idea. What would we have, right? So let me continue. Well, I plan to, we have a platform. I've had a platform designed for over a year. Actually, I had an alpha design that was going to release last year. But I had a hiccup with my team. I had a maniacal Russian developer who wanted to take control. And I had to basically, you know, kick them out. That was a lesson learned, let me tell you. Go with your instincts. If you meet someone and they're a complete jerk and yell at you, get them the fuck out, right? You don't need that in your life. You don't need that on your team. And um, ultimately, we will roll out once we hit a thousand Open Incubator Framework members, OIF members. And what I, so if you just type in the people search on LinkedIn, type in found ups okay we're at 23 right now so when that becomes 1000 we're gonna migrate to our platform and we're gonna still use LinkedIn we're gonna use API to connect with LinkedIn because LinkedIn is an awesome platform and I don't plan you know I plan to keep using them because um, you know what they do is really cool and what they offer is really cool um, another platform that we will interface and in once they get their API is is CapLink so CapLink is actually another really cool platform that I want to interface with. I want to plug you guys. You guys are awesome. CapLink. Thanks, Chris and Matt and everyone else. Um, so, you know, we're, what we're doing is doing it a little different. Instead of the traditional way, hey, let's run out and build a platform and, hope, and then bust their ass trying to get them to join, let's validate ourselves in, within an, an existing platform, in this case, LinkedIn, get it working, get people, you know, um, you know, um, gelling and seeing and, you know, and, and, and my big thing is, can I get folks to sign up for me to help them at $500 a year, right? You're not going to find that anywhere else. $500, no additional cost. You operate under my C Corp. If you're in China, you can operate under our sister corp, uh, whatever, you know, and, um, you know, we will we will work we will we will work work to launch you. You get us and our team and everything else. I think that's a damn good deal for five hundred dollars. Myself, um, you're not gonna, and you're not gonna find anything else out there. That's why everyone's gonna poo me is because oh, you know, it's only five hundred dollars. What the heck can you do? Well, you know what? I don't give a fuck about money. You know, as long as I get some sushi and a beer and I buy my son, you know, a little one dollar present once in a while or making something out of wood you know I'm happy my wife and I we don't have big aspirations for wealth and I tell you even if I was a billionaire I wouldn't live like a billionaire I don't you know I think that's I wouldn't want to raise my kids like the Gates and all the other folks who are billionaires I mean I just wouldn't want it I wouldn't want to live in a big house I wouldn't want to send them to a private stuffy school um, you know I just wouldn't I want them to be normal like I did how I was raised you know, and ultimately we got to break that that whole attachment to, you know, to stupid objects that are meaningless. You know, what's really important in life are 
you know, are these kids having fun, right? And this family and having parks like this to walk in, right? And having clean water to drink and, you know, and having health insurance that I can just take my son to or whoever and not worry about it, right? And being able to have a house that I don't have to worry about someone coming and repossessing. You know, these are things that are really important in life. That's it. The American dream died. And ultimately, we have to have a new dream. A dream where society is treated fair and equal, where everyone is, you know, is, is respected and, and, and given care. You know? So anyway, anyway, that was a little bit of red herring. Um, so, come and, um, you know, call me anytime, 202-360-4467. You know, people tell you that you can wake me up. You know, I ask people, wake me up because, you know, I'm the type of guy who thinks that if I'm sleeping, I'm not being productive. And usually I work until I'm tired, then I take a nap and let the phone or let the Skype or let something wake me up, then I go back to work. You know, so I live in Japan, but I don't have a, you know, don't, don't worry about that. Just call me and talk to me because ultimately I believe what I'm doing is extremely important. And I think it's important to be able to get ideas launched. I think it's important to share the wealth amongst the network of folks instead of just a few people gaining the wealth. And uh, I think we need to give back, give back to the people, right? We need to give back to everyone and stop being greedy, selfish SOBs, right? Uh, it's that simple.